bring in NBC News senior medical correspondent, Dr. John Torres. Dr. Torres, good morning to you. Good morning. How are you guys doing? People are buzzing about this one, I think, honestly, because we're ready for the next step in all of this. So what do you make of the news that the Pfizer vaccine has been approved for the use for use in the UK? Does that put pressure on other countries like the U.S. and the FDA? And I think this is great news that the U.K. actually approved this and is going to start to use it. And it definitely puts pressure here in the U.S. for the FDA to approve it, which they're going to look at it eight days from now on December 10th is when they're meeting. But you have to realize there are a couple of differences in the approval process. And historically, the FDA, the U.S., has had a more strict approval process that has proven very successful. The main difference is the British approval process, the U.K. one, it uses data mainly from the manufacturer and how the manufacturer interprets that data. Here in the U.S., the FDA wants the raw data. They want the actual numbers and statistics. Then they pour through that, which is why it takes a couple weeks. Then they meet and they decide on it there. So it's a stricter policy. It's a policy that looks a little more in-depth at the vaccine and the safety. And it's one that hopefully people can understand that the safety is one of the most important things they are relying on at this point. But a week from now, December 10th is when they're going to meet. I never knew the difference between uh, the the two review processes, Dr. Mm -hmm. John. For for folks who are watching or listening, Dr. John, and there are many of them, um, people are skeptical. Of, of the vaccines and, quite frankly, really skeptical because they've been developed so quickly. What can scientists, what can the vaccine companies, what can our government do to reassure folks that these vaccines are going to be safe? And I understand the hesitancy that's out there because it has been done in record time. But what I've been told time and time again is that they, although they have done it fast, they haven't sacrificed anything. They just compressed the time frame. So they haven't skipped any steps. But in order to get people through that hesitancy, the government, the manufacturers, everybody approving this has to make sure transparency is key, number one. That information has to be out there, not just for the FDA to say it's safe and effective, but other groups that are looking at it as well. And I talked to Dr. Stephen Hahn a couple of weeks ago the commissioner of the FDA, and he promised that, that they would go through it thoroughly, the information would be transparent, other groups would have it, and they could give their opinion as well. And so I think once you hear this coalescence of opinions saying it's safe and effective, hopefully people have a better understanding that it is safe and effective and that hesitancy gets under control a little bit more, Craig. So, so Dr. John, the CDC's Vaccine Advisory Committee voted yesterday to decide who gets the vaccine first. So what can you tell us about the vote and who do they recommend gets the vaccine first? And, and then what's the, the, the order after that. And Al, yesterday the vote was on just the initial salvo, the initial administration of the vaccine. And what they wanted is phase 1A. And what they voted on were healthcare workers and those in long-term care facilities, the ones that are most critical from getting complications of coronavirus. Beyond that, they have just made recommendations for the next stage, essential workers. After that, those who have medical conditions that put them at higher risk. And then it goes on to uh, the, the regular population. But they only voted on that first stage. And the first stage is going to be, again, the healthcare workers and those in long-term care facilities because they're the ones that need the vaccines the most at this point. And Dr. John, distribution trucks, they are at the ready. So when the FDA authorization arrives, they can roll out. But what is that rollout going to look like once there is an approved vaccine? And this is the part that's complicated, and this is the part that they're really trying to focus on because we've never done this before. And there are going to be some trip-ups along the way, but what's happening right now is it's going through normal distribution channels, which usually your clinic, your hospital, pharmacies, they order it through uh, third parties. And that's where it seems like it's going to go through at the same point here with the states regulating who gets it at what point and through what distribution type situations. But it's going to be a ginormous rollout because you can imagine 330 million people at some point needing the vaccine. That's a large number of people all trying to get vaccinated within a few months time period. I think for the general public, we're going to see springtime when most people can be expecting the shot. Okay. Dr. Torres, thank you so much.